welcome to this course mathematical physics i am dr rajkishor mishra from maharshi college of natural law bhuvneshwar in the last class we discussed what is a function how a variable is changing with another variable y is changing with respect to x x is called independent variable y is called dependent variable and we have also discussed how to visualize the variation of a function through graphs today we shall discuss about a very important property of a function that is continuity okay some functions show continuity some functions show discontinuity and how to define them very precisely in a mathematical way we shall discuss but we'll start with an intuitive idea about this continuity of a function so from physics point of view let us give an example suppose we are a, we throw a projectile okay right in space we throw a projectile suppose it is constant to move on a plane okay so that if we draw its trajectory it is nothing but a function of x and y while y is its vertical coordinate and x is its horizontal coordinate and you all know in your 12th level standard that the relationship between the trajectory uh, between the y coordinate and x coordinate for the trajectory of a projectile is ax minus bx square so that the path of the trajectory is like this right so here y is a function of like x according to this equation ax minus bx square and if we draw the graph between y and x the graph is like this it's a parabola okay so you can see this path is a continuous path right and here we say this function of y as x is a continuous function so for the trajectory of a projectile the function of its vertical coordinate with, res uh, with respect to its horizontal coordinate is a continuous function okay suppose you just you just imagine suppose i make a break here in the graph then what does it mean at the, up to this point the particle is there after that point the particle is vanishing again it is appearing at this point is it it is not possible right physically it is very abstract so this this is the reason the trajectory is a continuous function okay so if there is a break in the graph in the curve then we say there is a discontinuity if there is no break then the function is a continuous function right so when a function is continuous when the dependent sorry independent variable is changing through a very small value our dependent variable is also changing through a very small value so there is no break or there is no sudden change there should be a very small change right so when x is changing to a very small magnitude through a small magnitude then corresponding functional value f of x is also changing through a very small value okay if x is changing through a very small value and f of x is suddenly changing if there is a jump then it is the function is discontinuous right so <coughs> suppose suppose y as a function of x here it is x the curve is like this any function which is represented by this function uh, this curve so any arbitrary function and we if we want to examine the continuity of the function at a point c x at x is equal to c then if we are changing c through a very small value suppose there is an interval a b a b in which the x lies in this uh, interval a b so that function is defined in this domain okay so when we define a function in a domain for every point on in the domain for every element of the domain there is a unique value of a function and if x1 and x2 are two values of this independent variable in the domain and their corresponding function values are fx1 and f of x2 then fx2 is independent of fx1 
whatever the relation may be existing between x2 and x1, the corresponding relation does not hold good in the fx1 and between the fx1 and fx2. So, they are quite independent. Okay. Now, we, we want to see the relative change of f of x2 minus f of x1 with respect to x2 minus x1. So, the point is if x2 minus x1 is small, then f x2 minus function value of f at x2 minus function value at x1 must be very small if the function is continuous. If this change is small, but this change is very large, then the function is discontinuous. Okay. So, here let us define in an interval, we define a point c and the function value at c is say f of f of c. Okay. So, that this point is c f of c. Then to be more precise, we should let us consider an interval c minus h to c plus h okay. or say c is let us take the point c is changing through h. So, that c changing through c plus h, h may be positive may be negative. Okay. The function value at c is f of c, the function value at c plus h is f of c plus h. So, if f of c plus h minus f of c magnitude mod, I mean this may be positive, this may be negative depending upon h may be positive or h may be negative. And if this mod is small for when mod of h is small numerically, I mean numerically very small, numerically very small, then we say that function is continuous at c. Okay. And in the mathematical language, when we say small, it is quite uh, not well defined, right? Because you know small is how small it is. If you say 0 0.01 is small, then 0 0.001 is smaller than this one. Therefore, to be more precise and to give a very precise definition about the continuity, we will say that this mod of f of c plus h minus f of c must be less than any arbitrary small positive number epsilon. Epsilon is any arbitrary small positive number, positive number provided there exists a positive number say delta. So, that mod of h is less than always delta. Okay. So, for a very small value of h, this difference between f of c plus h minus f of c is also very small this implies this and this implies this, then we say the function is continuous at c. Okay. <coughs> so, <coughs> so, for this value our h will lie between minus delta and plus delta. So, there is always an interval, open interval, so that h lies between minus delta and plus delta. Okay. Now, we can replace f of c plus h. Okay. Then, this equation, this inequation, what it implies? When f of c plus h minus f c is mod is less than epsilon, that means, f of c minus epsilon and f of c plus epsilon. Between these two values f of 
c plus h must lie ok right the value of function f of c plus h must lie between <coughs> your f of c minus epsilon and f of c plus epsilon ok this is the meaning of this one is not it and epsilon is an arbitrary positive number. So, that your the interval is c minus h to c plus h ok or we can see the x or a h lies between c minus delta to c plus delta h will lie between c minus delta to c plus delta ok. So, if we replace f of c plus h as f of x if we replace f of c plus h as f of x then <coughs> we can write this as the function is continuous at x is equal to c provided f of c minus epsilon is less than f of x and it is less than f of c plus epsilon. That means, f of x lie between f of c minus epsilon to f of c plus epsilon ok. If we replace f of c plus h as f of x. So, the function will be continuous provided provided there exists a positive number small positive number delta. So, that <coughs> our x our x lies between c minus delta to c plus delta. So, they double implies the meaning is that when c is varying through delta very small value f of x is varying with a with in a very small range from f of c ok. Or let us give a more visualization of this continuity in terms of the graph. Suppose our c f of c is the point ok and we draw two lines y is equal to f of c minus epsilon and y is equal to f of c plus epsilon say 1 a 1 b ok. So, obviously, this is a line parallel to x axis this is also a line parallel to x axis. So, let this is y is equal to f of c plus epsilon and this is y is equal to f of c minus epsilon ok. Then we shall draw another two lines x is equal to c minus delta x is equal to c plus delta set 2 a set 2 b. These two lines are parallel to y axis right. So, let us draw x is equal to this one is x is equal to c minus delta and say this line is x is equal to c plus delta. So, that our point c and f of c lies in between these two parallel lines. And if we say that the function is continuous at c that means, when c f x is varying in either way from c either increasing either from this side or this side the function value must be changing through a very small value. So, if for any point if for any point our point for any value of x for any value of x our point p lies between the two parallel lines 1 a and 1 b these are the two lines 1 a and 1 b then definitely this this uh, uh, I mean this point 
P must lie between the two parallel lines 2A and 2B. These are the 2A and 2B parallel lines. These are the 1A and 1B parallel lines. So, the function if the function is continuous then then definitely if the point for any value of x if the point P lies between the lines 1A and 1B then it must lie between the lines 2A and 2B also then we say the function is continuous right. So, that there will be no sudden change there will be no sudden change just you recall we have discussed in the last class about the graphs of the greatest integer function like this your x and this is f of x from f x 0 to 1 the function value is like this and this one point is not there ok. From 1 to 2 suddenly the function value is like this again this is not the so, you can see when x is changing from 1 plus delta to 1 minus delta, 1 minus delta. When it is changing from 1 to 1 plus delta, the function value jumps to 2, sorry, this is, this is 0, 1, 0, 1, 2, ok. So, the function value changes to, it is 1, 2, 2, so it is 1, ok, the function value changes to 1 and when it is x value is changing to from 1 to 1 minus delta the function value is coming to 0. So, you see there is a certain change. So, if you draw two parallel lines here as f c plus epsilon f c minus epsilon then the point does not lie between the two parallel vertical corresponding vertical lines ok. All the points do not lie particularly this point do not does not lie. So, you can see there is a break in the function in the graph. So, this function is not continuous at this point, at this one point, ok. So, the function is continuous at C provided the function value lies between f c minus epsilon and f c plus epsilon, where epsilon is an arbitrary positive number, pre assigned arbitrary positive number, and for this, there must a positive number exist that is say delta, so that x lies between c minus delta and c plus delta ok. So, this is what the definition of a continuous function ok. I mean intuitive definition not exactly mathematical definition we shall discuss more math in a more mathematical way later, but <coughs> for going to that point let us let us again have more introspection towards this continuity form. You see when your what we are considering that a value near suppose we are we are to we are going to test the for continuity at x is equal to c is a point ok where c lies between the interval a and b ok. Then what we are considering the function value we are this finding the function value at c f of c and then we want to find the function value near c ok. So, the function value at x is equal to c function value y at c y near c y at c y near c ok. So, when y at c and y near c are very close enough, if we are approaching x to be as close as possible to c, then we say the function is continuous. But here, when y near c from this side is not the value of y at c from this side, but here however close we may go y at c y at c the function value at c is and function value near c they are very close the difference is very small ok. And this I mean the function value near and at this gives a new idea 
called limit. Okay, we call it the limiting value. When the x is approaching c, the function value is approaching a particular value, and that particular value is called limit. Okay, so mathematically we write limit extends to c f of x is equal to a limiting value say l. While x is approaching c, the function value is approaching a particular value say l. This is called a limiting value. And if this limiting value is equal to the function value at c, we can say the function is continuous. Okay. This is in a more mathematical way. So, approaching near the c, near c at c. This is the, they are, these are the two differences. Okay. And in the interval, if a function is continuous at every point, we are, we are here considering the continuity of the function at x is equal to c in an interval a b. Okay. So, if in the interval at every point the function is continuous, then we say the function is continuous in the entire interval, in the entire domain. Okay. And if the function is not continuous at a point, we call the function is discontinuous. So, here I have shown you a discontinuous function, function is discontinuous at these points x is equal to 1, x is equal to 2, so on, greatest, greatest integer function. But here is a function where we see the function is continuous. Okay. So, a function is continuous if <coughs> the, there exists an arbitrary positive number epsilon, so that mod of f of x minus c is less than epsilon for any and there must exist a small positive number delta, so that x lies between c minus delta to c plus delta. Okay. So, this is the continuity and I just introduced about limit, limiting value of a function. Now, let us see an example. Okay. Suppose, we are considering a function f of x is equal to 3 x plus 1. We want to, we want to see the continuity of the function at x is equal to 1, at x is equal to 1. Okay. Then f of 1 is how much? 3 into 1 plus 1 is equal to 4. So, f of x minus f of 1 is equal to how much? It is 3 x plus 1 minus 4 is equal to 3 x minus 3 is equal to 3 into x minus 1. Okay. So, if our mod of f of x minus f 1 is less than an arbitrary positive number epsilon, that is mod of 3 into x minus 1 is less than epsilon, this implies x minus 1 mod is less than epsilon by 3. Okay. So, this implies x lies between 1 minus epsilon by 3 and 1 plus epsilon by 3. <coughs> okay. So, for the for an arbitrary positive number epsilon, we found that there exists a delta epsilon by 3, so that x lies between 1 minus epsilon 3 to 1 plus epsilon 3. That means, when x is very close to 1, f x is very close to your value 4. That means, the function is continuous at x is equal to 1. Okay. Let us discuss another example. Suppose, we define a function like this f of x is equal to x when x is less than half. It is equal to 1 when x is equal to half and it is equal to 1 minus x when x greater than half. Okay. So, if we draw the plot x and f of x 
Suppose this is half, there is a half, there is a 1, then up to half, I mean when x is from 0 to half, our function value is x. So, graph is straight line f x y is equal to x graph is straight line. At x is equal to half, the function value is 1, this is half 1 point. Okay. So, there is a sudden change. Then from half to up to 1, what is the function value? 1 minus x. So, it is having negative slope. Okay. Okay. And this point is not, I mean the graph is excluding this point, because at a half the function value lies here half and 1. Now, you see at, at half if we want to see the continuity at half c is equal to half, then if we change from half if we vary the value of x from half in either way half minus epsilon half minus delta or half plus delta. What will happen? If we change it from half minus half, half delta to half plus delta, what will the value of f of half minus f of x mod? It is increasing from half, to, I mean it is going more than half because at this point it is the difference is half. If we are moving in this direction or in this direction, the difference is increasing and it is always more than half. Right. We can never get a positive number say delta, so that, so that this difference is less than a small positive number epsilon. Rather what we find it is always greater than half, it is greater than a positive number. As we do not get a positive number epsilon for which this mod value is less than epsilon for an interval c minus delta to c plus delta or half minus delta to half plus delta, the function is not continuous at half. Okay. But in the earlier case, what we are finding that f of x minus f of 1 is always less than a small positive number epsilon and this double implies that x lies between 1 minus epsilon by 3 to 1 plus epsilon by 3. So, we get a delta epsilon by 3, so that x lies between c minus delta and c plus delta, but this is not the situation here. So, this function is not continuous at x is equal to half. Okay. So, this is what an intuitive idea about a function, about the continuity of a function and if the function is not continuous at a point, we call the discontinuous function and in an interval it at a, every, every point the function is continuous, then the function is continuous in the entire region. Okay. Thank you. In the next class, we shall discuss about the more mathematical precise definition about the function in terms of limit. Okay.